each of them. Both are in battleground straight states right now. Trump will campaign for a second straight day in North Carolina. Harris is off the trail today after pitching to right-leaning voters in three states and warning against another Trump term. Meantime, Trump appealing to Christian voters through culture war issues like transgender and parental rights. The consequences of him ever being in the White House again are brutally serious. Your religious liberty will be gone. Your free speech will be gone. Your Second Amendment will be gone. And parental rights will be gone forever. Trump postponed a speech at a gun rights conference in Georgia today and scheduled a last minute rally in North Carolina, as some polling suggests Harris. What you say is not true. Carolina. Whoever wins the White House next month, former President Donald Trump or Vice President Kamala Harris, will determine the tone and much of the substance of the relationship between the world's two largest economies, the U.S. and China. NBC's Janice Mackey Freyer reports now from Beijing. It is the one foreign policy issue that Democrats and Republicans can agree on, that China is a threat to the U.S. in everything from technology and trade to geopolitical clout. And while China is a perennial campaign point, we did an analysis of recent speeches, interviews, and rallies and found that both the Harris and Trump campaigns are now, just weeks before the election, ramping up their discussion on China. Kamala Harris has been criticizing Trump for selling out to China and giving up American jobs especially in the auto sector, while Donald Trump has said he would slap huge tariffs on Chinese goods and that China wouldn't dare provoke him because President Xi Jinping knows he's, quote, crazy. For China, there's actually little difference between the two candidates when it comes to the policies that shape and affect U.S.-China relations. Beijing will never admit to a favorite candidate to avoid being seen as interfering in the election, but the leadership here is seen as preferring the incumbent party to ensure what they call policy continuity. But on Chinese social media, it gives a different view. Trump supporters are dominant there mainly because they're less concerned with his policies than his transactional style. They think he'll alienate regional allies like South Korea and Japan and lower America's standing in the world, and that might all work in China's favor. There's a joke that a second Trump presidency would make China great again. The expectation here, though, is that no matter who wins, U.S.-China relations will be no less rocky. Janice Mackey Freyer, NBC News, Beijing. When California voters go to cast their ballots, they'll be voting on 10 statewide ballot propositions. And tonight, a forum will focus on informing voters about those propositions. Professor Mary Beth Moylan with the McGeorge School explains the importance of these forums. We entrust voters in California to be making laws. We're deciding about what laws are that will govern us. And if we don't really understand some of them are very complicated by the way right they're they're pages and pages long they're highly technical and so it's really important as we are passing laws that will govern all of us that we actually know what those laws will do what maybe some of the unintended consequences of those laws are and also if there's likely to be litigation coming out of the passage of the laws. In other words, a lot of times these ballot measures get passed, but then they get challenged in court because they have some deficiency. Forum takes place tonight at the McGeorge School of Law at the University of the Pacific and will also be live streamed. If you missed yesterday's deadline to register to vote here in California, there's still a way to make your vote count. Case Area 3's Mike Desell details the safety net available to those who either forgot or missed yesterday's deadline to vote traditionally in this election. Right now, we're standing outside the Sacramento County Elections Headquarters, and even though we're two weeks away, I want you to take a look at the ballot drop box outside the parking lot because look at this this was a video this morning of just how many ballots that election workers were already removing from this ballot drop box throughout the morning we've seen people just driving up dropping off vote by mail ballot after vote by mail ballot and these are all people who were registered for this election the deadline to register was yesterday so if you missed out fear not take a look let me explain. Did you know California has a law known as the conditional conditional voter registration law, and that allows you to still be able to register from now through Election Day through a conditional voter ballot. What does that mean? Well, it simply means it's pretty simple. You can still vote uh, or register to vote at any election headquarters or any early voting center or even polling place all the way up until election day and your vote will count the only 
uh, caveat here is that it could be delayed, a little lag time between the time you cast your ballot and the time that your vote is added to that final tally. But again, uh, using this ballot drop box as the visual for today's lesson, those early voting centers, they open on Saturday and will be open up until Election Day. So to get more information on where you can find that early vote center near you, go to our website, kcra.com, and you'll see the how and ways to vote and a link to find the location nearest you for those early voting centers which open this weekend. Or right now you can go down to your county election headquarters and register in person for that conditional, conditional voter ballot. Mike to sell, KCRA for news. Well, there are now 20 new recipients of the National Medal of the Arts. President Biden made the presentations in a private ceremony at the White House yesterday. Among them was LeVar Burton, who was raised in Sacramento. You may remember him from Reading Rainbow and lots of other TV shows. Other recipients include Queen Latifah, Missy Elliott, and Queen of Tejano Music, Selena Quintanilla. She was awarded posthumously, obviously. The Arts Medal is the highest award given to artists, art patrons, and groups by the United States government. It honors exemplary individuals and organizations that have advanced the arts in America. And Selena definitely did that. Ironman athletes are rolling into the capital city right now. The Boost businesses in downtown are already...